a sobering message from AAA. Here's a classic movie quiz. The Producers from 1967 stars Gene Wilder. Under the right circumstances, a producer could make more money with a flop than he could with a hit. Who won the only Oscar of his career for this movie? Come and join the Nazi party. Writer-director Mel Brooks, who won for Best Screenplay. You provide the popcorn, the couch, and the TV. We'll provide great movies like The Producers. On KCET Must See Movies. See it tonight at 8. California's Gold is produced in association with KCET Los Angeles and is seen statewide on California public television. This series is endorsed by the California Teachers Association, the California School Boards Association, and the California Library Association. Well, hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser. Get ready for an adventure and a rock and roll home tour. Now let's set things up. We're in beautiful Palm Springs, lots of beautiful homes here. We're in the northern part of Palm Springs in a neighborhood called Little Tuscany. And we are standing in front of this beautiful home. You got Mount San Jacinto off in the distance. This home is very historic. It's very important because who used to own it and who used to live here? But as far as I'm concerned, the real story is not, well, at least part of the story is not who just used to own it and live here, but who owns it and lives here now. And here they are, standing right here, the proud homeowners. Introduce yourself to everybody. Reno Fontana. I'm Laura Whittier Fontana. Okay, <laughs> and now we can give it away. Who, we know you live here now. Who used to live in this house? Uh, it used to be uh, Elvis Presley, man. Now, you're not going to do that impression the whole time, are you? No, no, not at all. <laughs> all right, so Elvis owned this house and lived here from? April 2nd, 1970, until the day he passed away. So he lived here like? Seven and a half years. Seven and a half years. And this is significant because he only... He owned this house. He, owned he didn't house. own that many houses, did he? That's correct. He, uh, he bought five houses in his lifetime. Uh, only four remain today, and one was torn down in uh, Beverly Hills many, many years ago. But uh, he owned this for a third of his adult life. He owned this property longer than any other uh, of his other homes besides Grayson. This is absolutely <laughs> amazing. And I got to tell you, I haven't spent a lot of time with you all, but you all are hardcore Elvis fans, aren't you? That's the only way you could say it, man. I started when I was a child. Which one of you is the hardest core on that? He's the hardest core. He dances and swivels. He's got the same body, and he's the hardest core Elvis fan. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is public television, man. We're not going that far. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, I'm I sorry think you're beginning to get the idea of what's in store, because not only are we going to take the home tour, but we're going to hear some great Elvis stories. You will, guaranteed. Along the way, because Absolutely. really it's not just the house, it's yeah. the story stories that go with the house. Absolutely. So much history here. He spent so much time here. Um, and, and one of the great stories is the house was closed 27 years after his death. Uh, people forgot it was here. It fell off the Elvis radar. Uh, so we're bringing it back to life. A lot wow. to tell. The house is back on the Elvis <laughs> radar and we're getting ready to go right in the middle of it all. And do you feel kind of the vibes when you go in? Uh, I got to tell you, some of the craziest things have happened here. We had a lady come in on the tour uh, about three months ago. She had bought a necklace the day Elvis passed away, a TCB necklace. She had never taken it off. She walked in the living room, had that necklace 30 some odd years, and the clasp broke in the living room and fell oh off. My uh -huh. True story. A true story. Yeah. So there's no telling what's going to yeah. happen to uh, us in there. <laughs> yeah. Elvis has not left that building. <laughs> yeah. oh. All right, here we go. We're going into the Elvis house here in Palm Springs. Well, Elvis not only has not left the building, he's on the side of the fireplace. 
Boy, that really makes a statement up there. Now, first off, that wasn't up here when Elvis lived here. No, it wasn't. It was just put up recently, within the last week, actually. Now, when he lived here, it was a lot lower key, wasn't it? I mean, did everybody know he lived here when he lived here? He had Elvis fans standing outside of the gates. People used to put notes in this palm tree over here, so he had fans constantly here. People knew he so lived there. So they knew he lived They oh, yeah. knew he Boy, lived Boy, now they really know uh, he oh, used yeah. to live here. Yeah. And you're the artist who did that. Your name is? Jeff Howe. Okay, what's the story behind how you did this? Are you an artist? Are you a I'm, welder? What? What? I'm an artist, and uh, I heard the story about the house and, and was really moved by it and uh, decided to see if I could donate some artwork here to uh, the memory of Elvis here at the house. Wow, and obviously you are an Elvis fan. I'm a big fan of Elvis. There. You know, i got to tell you, we've just been standing here for a while. People stop and photograph just <laughs> the just the chimney. It's I mean, it's a spectacular piece. I, you know, Jeff had this vision, I mean, when he came over and said, can I just measure the chimney? And I was like, I wonder what he's doing. And he came with that. I couldn't stop jumping, Hugh. I was jumping now, up and down. And his eyes are following me. They will. Yes. They around. Follow. And this is his brilliance. This is what an artist he Elvis is. Elvis follows you everywhere you go. Can't get away from him. Boy. <laughs> King's always watching. The King's watching. All right. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. You, We're heading inside the King's house. We're inside the king's house in his living room. This was his living room? This was his living room. This was the living room where he recorded nine songs that were released. Wait a minute, in this wait, living a minute wait a minute. He recorded in this room? He recorded. It's very well documented that he recorded in this living room. Well, it's documented in books and in papers and that sort of thing. It's also documented on the ceiling. <laughs> on the ceiling. On the ceiling. <laughs> Tell us what we're looking at. Well, Elvis had to finish some of his contract for recording, and he didn't want to go to L.A. to do it, so he asked RCA to come down and bring the recording studio here, and they installed the acoustic tile that you see on the ceiling. So those acoustic tiles were here to soften the sound yeah. so he could record here. That's right, in 1973. Wow. Now, you all, this isn't Elvis's furniture. No. Uh, you all live here. We live here. What had happened after Elvis passed away about a week thereafter, uh, the Palm Springs Police Department actually got a call saying the front gate was open, the front door was open, and they came and investigated, and the house had been broken into. By his fans? By someone. Uh, they took two of his guitars, all of his clothes, a number of pieces of furniture, even the carpets. Wow. Grace Graceland told us that for the next... Uh, about 18 years or so up to the middle 90s, they would look in the National Enquirer, the Globe magazine, and find pieces of carpet from this oh. house still for sale. So you all live here with your furniture now? Uh, yes, we do. We're about to undergo a big makeover. Laura will tell you more about that. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, part of the city requirement was that uh, uh, for our permit that we got is that we actually had to live on site. So the house is 5,500 square feet, three separate wings. So one wing is reserved for us, the same wing- To that, live in. Uh, to live in, the same wing that Elvis and Priscilla lived in. So wow. that's our private wing and the rest of the house is open to the uh, to the public. Wow, so the public, this is part of the tour. Absolutely. So they come in here, they see the acoustical tiles on the ceiling, that's but it. they see something else, come on over here. This is really interesting. Now, he didn't record on one of these things. What we're coming over here to see is over here. Tell us what you've got fixed up over here. Well, this is a 1970 uh, Rockola jukebox. Elvis moved in in 1970. And we actually have several songs on here from Elvis, but one in particular is called Are You Sincere? And he recorded that song in, in this, this little room. living room. Can we get that on? Because, boy, that'll get us. E8. E8, you probably got that memorized. Well, we did for a reason. E is for Elvis. He was born on January the 8th. Oh, my gosh. So nothing is by chance, nothing by chance. No. in here. Everything <laughs> goes by the right number, <laughs> although I don't know what's going on over well, here. It's, uh, it's playing right now. Yeah. There it is, E8. Are you sincere? Oh, boy. <laughs> and to think that that was recorded in this room yeah. so you can kind of feel the Elvis vibes absolutely we've had people walk in here hear the song and break down in tears he, well, now, so I'm not that big of an Elvis <laughs> fan. I'm not going to break down in tears. Know, man. You're growing sideburns right now, and you don't even know it. And the tour has just started. Who yeah. knows what's going to happen by the you end? Don't know what you look like. All right, so we got the we 
got the song going here. Are you sincere? And one of the cute stories about when they were recording here was Elvis had, you know, he started getting rocking and rocking. Well, the microphone stand broke. And when it broke, the guys didn't want to stop him. Elvis just kept going. So one of the guys went in the kitchen, got a mop bucket with the mop handle, brought it out, took the microphone piece off the microphone, taped it to the mop bucket, and that's how he finished the recording. Well, is that a true that's story? That's a true story. It's documented. The band members that were here told us that's what happened. <laughs> wow. And one of the guys that told us the story is today a preacher. There is no way he would no, lie. he's not going to tell us. Yeah. I'm telling you. All right, now look, we're going from the living room, the recording studio, into the... Bar area and dining room. All right, now stand over there by the bar, Reno. This is a, and, and this, we know that this was in, an important part of the house, too. It, it really was. It, uh, actually, the bar area was not here when Elvis moved in. The dining room used to be elongated. Uh huh. And uh, he decided he needed a place for the sodas for his buddies, and uh, they put in the bar. It's original as you see it, as Elvis would have seen it last. And when we remodel, this will be completely untouched. This was Elvis's comfort home. He would leave Los Angeles that he called the Hollywood Zoo and just come here and be Elvis. So what you see is he, Elvis could have bought any house he wanted to buy. Yeah, because and this he, is not a pretentious house. That's right. It's just a very comfortable house. After Elvis passed away, his wife, Priscilla, wrote a book called Elvis and Me. And in that book, she made a very specific quote. She said, this house was his refuge from the world. Wow. He was known around the world. He's the only entertainer ever to have sold a billion records uh, with a B. <laughs> but still, this is where he came to get away from everyone, everything. Uh, pretty amazing when you think about this it. This house. This, this house, house right here. We're coming into the kitchen. This is like a home tour. Well, this is a home tour. <laughs> this is a home tour, you know, but it's a famous home, right? All right, now, and it's a famous kitchen. It's a famous kitchen. This Why is, is where... It? I know Elvis ate here, but, yes. I mean, this is like, you've still got, look at this. You've still got the original All of this is original, oven. original oven, original cabinets, original lamps from the 70s. Wow. And this still works. Every now and then one burner will be a little temperamental, well, like know, a woman. Been around for 40, What's 50 a woman? years. The older we get, we get a little bit more temperamental. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look over here. We got a little Elvis motif going over here. We got the king here. We got a book. Are you hungry? No, you need to do that. Come in here, Reno. Reno needs to sing, sing it that for us. Tonight. Are you hungry tonight? <laughs> There's the book. Are you hungry tonight? Elvis's favorite recipes. Recipes. Favorite recipes. He made a lot of recipes, uh, cooked a lot of recipes here, especially, as you can see, the Skippy, his famous peanut butter and banana sandwiches. See, and, you know, <laughs> Skippy, he loved Skippy. So nothing is here by accident. <laughs> you put Skippy peanut butter out here because Elvis liked the peanut butter and peanut banana, butter and banana sandwiches? Banana sandwiches. Fried oh. peanut butter and banana now, sandwiches. Now, see, hardcore Elvis fans would know that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Everything um, about him. Yes. So when you give tours of this house, you have to be on your stuff. I mean, you have to know what you're talking about. People will call you on it. That's right, they? because they've read, I mean, these are people that are in the 70s, 75. They've read every single piece of history or documentation. So they ask me questions that I, you know, I learn things. When we have people come in the house, I learn things about Elvis that I didn't know. So all you hardcore Elvis fans <laughs> out there, when you visit the Don't kitchen, they got the skippy. <laughs> <laughs> They're on the money here with the Skippy peanut butter. The Skippy peanut butter. There you go. And banana sandwiches. To make you a Skippy peanut butter and banana sandwich. Fried. <laughs> it just keeps getting better with hunk a hunk a burn and love going on in the background here. We've come into a room that I have absolutely no idea what this room was used for, but I think we're with the people who do. Tell us about this room. Well, after Elvis divorced in 73, he needed. Uh, some more room for his friends. And uh, he decided that uh, he would build something for them, and this turned into the playroom. The playroom? Yeah, they had a pool table, pinball machines. Uh, they would throw out sometimes 30 sleeping bags. People just spend the night here. Really? Yeah, this room's got to People yeah. from the movies when he was in LA, he would invite down for the weekend for a barbecue. Yeah. Now, is this original? You this are walking floor? on the same floor Elvis walked on. Wow. Same floor. So this didn't get changed over not, the years. Not changed at all. Again, you have to remember, when he passed away in 77, this house was closed up. 
until Graceland figured out what to do with it. And from 77 until 2004, when we bought it, 27 years, uh, this house was only open about seven months total. Wow. So it fell off the Elvis radar. I know, it fell off, it's back on the radar. <laughs> and look, this, what is all this stuff over here? Well, this is memorabilia that, you know, we've, through the wires and everything, we've asked people to donate their Elvis collection because there's a lot of people that are older or, you know, their grandkids don't want the collection. So we get calls all the time. We just got one just an hour ago. Someone's got a thousand pieces where people donate stuff. What are you going to do with all this We're stuff? going to display it. This house will be turned into a museum. So eventually it's going to be a museum. Oh, yeah. Correct. Yeah, from Correct. floor to ceiling and even on the ceilings, uh -huh. you'll see Elvis memorabilia. When you come here, you'll be able to spend three, four hours at at a time. Oh my gosh. Well, look at this. Let's just take a sweep <laughs> around the room. We got a little Elvis tribute over here. Here is the pool table, not the exact pool table, but he had a pool table in here. He had a black pool table in here. So this yeah. is what uh, we decided uh, should come back in the room. I want to get you over here again by Elvis's. See, I like to compare you to Elvis. <laughs> Don't you think there's a Isn't lot of similarities <laughs> here? But <laughs> No, man. Sorry. People, you know what? Yeah. People get a kick out of this, don't they? Well, Coming they really, in a room like this. They really enjoy it. When you're walking in, you're getting a behind-the-scenes look of Elvis, how he lived his life. And it's completely different than anything you'd find at Graceland. How he lived his life mm -hmm. totally off stage and out of sight exactly. of people. Exactly. And uh, so it's a real, uh, uh, people tell us, privilege. They use that word a lot, a privilege to be able to come in and see Elvis, how he really was, Elvis the man. Wow. In Memphis, he was Elvis the legend. Here, he was just one of us. In this room called the playroom. The playroom. Now, there's one more piece that you need to take a look at. What? It's right behind you, his sauna. His sauna? Yeah, his sauna. You want to take a look? Well, sure. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Who has a sauna in their entertainment? That's his sauna. <laughs> That's his sauna. That's so and he it's had a... one sauna. He actually had two. There's another one. He'll show you. Where? Right here. <laughs> he had a dry sauna and he had a steam sauna. Well, of course. This was the steam sauna. This was the steam uh, sauna. That's right. That's right. Can I sit in the steam? Is it? Yeah. I don't know what's sacrilege and what's not. No. I mean, is it okay? To we see? let people step inside and really get the feeling, and they can take pictures. Do they turn on the heat? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure they start sweating yeah. by the time they get All right, in. I'm going in the sauna. Don't close the door. I just want to see what it's like inside Elvis's sauna. There you go, buddy. This is the wet one. This is the wet one. The dry one. one's over there. The brown one is the dry sauna. Yep, this is the steam sauna. This is the steam sauna. I'll see you kids later. <laughs> you don't have left the building. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. I feel my temperature rising. From the sauna to the jailhouse rock jacuzzi. Jailhouse Rock. Who gave it that name? We, we gave it the name. Everything around here has got something special to it. But uh, let me show this to you. Wow, this is amazing. And this is the original jacuzzi? Original. Elvis had it built. All right, let's walk around. Oh, wow, look at this. You got it pretty well drained. It's, I guess it's OK to walk in here yeah, like this. All right, now. Do you have any good jacuzzi stories? Well, I, I got to tell you, the stories that we have, we, we're not going to uh, <laughs> mention on public broadcast TV. But Elvis had this jacuzzi covered uh, because Rona Barrett, after Elvis divorced, wanted pictures of Elvis in the jacuzzi with uh, the ladies. So wait a minute, Rona Barrett, the she, gossip columnist, sent that's correct. People sent, out sent a helicopter, a helicopter to shoot a picture of Elvis. That's right in the jacuzzi with some young lovely. And she got some photographs. So Elvis decided that was enough of that. And he had it covered as you see it today. That's why it's covered. Yeah. Wow, this is, let's sit down here. This is amazing to think that this has survived all these years. Well, what we're going to do, there are some parts of the house we haven't touched uh, primarily because we're going to do a home makeover show. 
And uh, we want to document the before and after pictures. Uh, it'll be much more dramatic. I love this time. Yeah, this all, is original. all original. All original. Time. And, we and will you keep know it. what? For an Elvis fan to have the opportunity to take a jacuzzi right. in the exact same jacuzzi <laughs> that Elvis was in. Yep. And that's what, uh, that's what we're going to do. Our, our website, Huell, says that even though my wife and I have to pay the mortgage, this house belongs to Elvis fans everywhere. We're all part of the same family. We have the same love for Elvis. Wow. And the stories, this jacuzzi could, wait a minute, no, we don't want to go there. Do you, we? Just the stories could heat up the water. <laughs> <laughs> We're inside Elvis's bedroom. Come on in. Boy, this is kind of exciting to be in the king's bedroom. Well, you know, it's really a, uh, a, a neat room, and it tells you a lot about Elvis. You know, he was a very private person, and he designed this room. So when you look around, you see it's small, understated. Yeah. But this is what he chose. This is how Elvis saw himself. This made him comfortable. So it really. Uh, so he would come in here when there were other things going on in the house. This was Elvis's. He built this himself in 1974. This was his private quarters, the whole east wing of the house. Mm -hmm. So when his his entourage was here or other guests were here, they would hang out by the pool or they would hang out in the living room. Elvis would come here, and if they all were in the living room, he would go through that checkered room back to the driveway. And you'd never even know Elvis wow. would come and go unless. Wow. He was literally so the making house was an appointment. big enough to have whole different wings mm -hmm. that yes. didn't know what was going on in the That's other correct. wing. That's correct. We actually have the canceled checks and uh, photographs of this room during the time it was built. The checks actually signed by Elvis. Now mm -hmm. wait a minute, I because I, I got to project. There's no bed. <laughs> where where was the bed? <laughs> well, the bed was here. You can see where we the know bed the bed was. Yeah, the bed was here. Bed Look, was here. Inventions <laughs> in the carpet. It was here, and what's nice about it is you can see the bed faces this whole entire beautiful wow. view. I mean, sunrise yeah. is just stunning here. I actually have the pictures, and the, all the windows are orange. I mean, it's just and for an absolutely Elvis fan beautiful. to yeah. be in his bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a big deal still for me. We've been here six years, and I walk in here and I go. Man, this was Elvis's bedroom. This now, is a big deal. Now, I wanted to show the bathroom mm -hmm. because the bathroom's got that bright red tile. Yeah. Elvis loved red. Well, look, you're wearing yeah, a red yeah, shirt. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Elvis loved red. Yeah. Reno wouldn't let us shoot in the bathroom. Uh, the entire house Huel, is available to the fans around the world. However, we will show them the bathroom, but we've never allowed a photograph in there just out of respect to Elvis. Wow. Well, believe me, it's You're red. The powder room. Yeah, it the is powder room the powder room. We can see. Oh, it's got a little bit of red. Oh, there it is. There's a red tile. Look at this red. <laughs> this is the way the whole bathroom is. This bright red tile. All the original tile. And the bathroom, you remember in the 70s, the sunken tub? Yeah, it's got the, a sunken it's tub. It's red with black tile, sunken tub, which is wow. Now, there's two bathrooms in this room. The sunken tub bathroom was Elvis's, and he had another guest bathroom built for his uh, lady friend that he was with. Wow, and look, these are old. Yes. yes. I've seen these 1970s. around Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This house does not have a lot of closet space, I have to say. Wow. <laughs> but well. back then, people didn't build these huge closets. And again, you know, Graceland has the huge walk-in closet. This was Elvis's weekend retreat. I mean, yeah. this is where he came to get away from things. And, you know, it's been known from... Uh, it, the the entourage around him, Elvis said, you know, if I want to walk around here and I don't want to take a shower, I don't want to comb my hair, I don't want someone taking a picture of it. So there are this not many pictures house. of him here. No, no. That explains why there yes. are very few photographs That's correct. of Elvis at this house. This is where Elvis could come and be Elvis. And we've not spoken to, to his that. most closest people, and they said, no, we respected Elvis. No he photos. didn't want no photos. photos. And if you really look in the books, you don't see a lot of photos in his houses. Thank goodness yeah. that you all are here to tell us the stories, though. <laughs> you know, it's nice. He didn't have to be on his I guard. I think there's one out there, though. I, I, I'm what, still looking. What, a photo looking. of yeah, Elvis I'm here? I'm still looking. Maybe out by the pool. I'm still praying. Oh, you know? my gosh. Well, let's stand out of the way because we want to get a shot. It's not here now, but we know where it was. That was Elvis's bed right there in Elvis's bedroom. Well, I didn't think it could get any better than Elvis's bedroom, but it just has in a big way because, Laura, you and Reno have saved what I think is the best for the last, the Elvis 
pool and the Elvis view of the Coachella Valley. First, let's talk about the pool, which is the original Elvis the original pool. pool. Tell us about this thing. Well, this pool is 11 and a half feet deep. Um, you know, Elvis loved that. used to have a diving board, and then that was taken out. But Elvis loved swimming, and he also liked deep pools. But when he would be laying out here, one of the awesome stories that was told to us by one of his entourage, he would be laying out here, and Elvis was a gun collector. A lot of people know that. That's documented. He would have the guys line up Coca-Cola cans, and he'd be in his swimsuit laying on a lounge chair, and he'd line up the Coca-Cola cans and shoot the Coca-Cola cans. trying to visualize <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, this whole thing. The, the reason why that story was told to us because one of the entourage uh, gentlemen, Sonny, said, you know, Elvis used to think it was funny to get real close. We wouldn't be finished putting the Coke cans and he'd start shooting. Oh and Elvis just thought it was, you know, he was a prankster. Elvis was a huge prankster and he, you know, he could play the pranks on people. So there were sounds <laughs> of friendly gunfire yeah, yeah. echoing through these canyons back in the 70s. That, that's what it was. In fact, uh, uh, a TV uh, shop downtown came and replaced two TVs. Uh, and Elvis shot out. In this house. Uh, a Hallmark TV, in fact. They're the ones, and the owner, the original owner is still there from Elvis's time. And he said, absolutely, I brought two TVs here at 3 o'clock in the morning because Elvis shot out the old ones. And I hope not in anger, <laughs> no, but well, just in excitement. He had a thing with Robert Goulet. They had some disagreement. Yeah, if Robert, oh, wait a minute. Any time yeah. Robert Goulet would come on the he television, would he would shoot the, the yeah. television. That's so true. That's what, exactly what happened. That's yeah. the most bizarre story I've heard so far. Now, the other thing that I found interesting, one of the few pictures that you have of the Elvis days here, <laughs> the pool with red indoor outdoor carpeting all the way around the edge of the pool what was that all about well you know when in the summertime when it gets hot you really can't walk on this and it was brilliant of him to put Elvis put it in himself to put the red carpet around red because indoor outdoor, indoor carpeting. outdoor carpet and you know you even can put your hands on the edge when you're in the pool so Elvis liked to sit on the edge of the pool you know so it's comfortable it's so not tell burning me you're gonna put more we red. are putting it back indoor, we are putting that carpeting we are in putting Only that Elvis could yeah. get away with I'm some of these that. things <laughs> I'm was, not sure so that cool. was a real statement interior or design statement red <laughs> indoor outdoor carpeting but for elvis almost anything worked yeah yeah we kind of started this thing off by saying you know it was a home tour a lot of the the furniture's gone but the bones are still here That's the right. stories are That's still right. here yeah. you have big plans for the future That's making right. this restoring this even more uh -huh. it's open to the yes. public now we're yeah. going to put the web and yeah. how you can take tours mm -hmm. meet these Thank two you. characters i'm telling you do you give the this is your average tour isn't it uh pretty much yeah we do have tour guides we're having so many people come through we can't accommodate everyone personally ourselves but uh, people call and request us, so uh, we're here for them. They're going to request you now because and you all are so good. We have corporate events here. We have weddings out here. You know, the roses, weddings are a big thing with the roses because, of course, it's... So you mean you could actually rent this place out and go swimming in the Elvis oh, pool? Yeah. Yes, yeah. summertime, yeah. we have what we call dive-in nights where you can actually lay in the pool. We have a huge 12-foot big screen TV that Showing we put an out. Elvis movie. Showing an Elvis movie. Have we let barbecue. them have barbecues. So yeah. we have wow. corporate events and private Late events. Late-night snack a little skippy peanut butter. Mm -hmm. We have there a wine go. and cheese night on Thursday nights that wow. people just enjoy. You know, I mean that that dusk at dusk it's just yeah. stunning here. I mean at nighttime the stars are so close it's like you can just reach up well, and this is talk the, to God. This is the yeah. view that Elvis enjoyed, yeah. and you can see why he yeah. loved this place so much. Yeah. One of only five homes mm -hmm. Elvis ever owned mm -hmm. in his lifetime. Just look out here with the pool in the foreground the roses, the mountains off in the distance as the sun is setting here in Palm Springs. This is Elvis's house where he lived for over seven years. It's a beautiful place and it is truly part of California's gold. We've had an absolutely wonderful afternoon here at Elvis's house. Well, hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser, and boy did I have fun hanging out with Reno and Laura at Elvis's Palm Springs house. This is a place you have got to visit and see for yourself.
This program was made possible by Chapman University, home of the California's Gold Exhibit and the Huell Hauser Archive. Here's a classic movie quiz. The Producers from 1967 stars Gene Wilder. Under the right circumstances, a producer could make more money with a flop than he could with a hit. Who won the only Oscar of his career for this movie? Come and join the Nazi party. Writer-director Mel Brooks, who won for Best Screenplay. You provide the popcorn, the couch, and the TV. We'll provide great movies like The Producers. On KCET Must See Movies, coming up next. Hi everyone, I'm Pete Hammond, and welcome to KCET Must See Movies. Today I am pleased to introduce you to another great must see movie, but I can't guarantee that it's the most seen movie, at least if you go by box office gross. Those films are in rarefied air, but most of them, in terms of current gross, have come from this century. In fact, in the top 50 highest money makers, only four of them go back as far as the 1990s. Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace, Jurassic Park, The Lion King, and Titanic. That one, however, came out in 1997, but is still the number two grossing movie of all time. You want to know number one? It actually belongs to the same director, James Cameron. That's right. Avatar, at a worldwide take of $2.787 billion, with a B, is the biggest ever, which tops Titanic's $2.187 billion. In fact, those two, along with Star Wars The Force Awakens and Avengers Infinity War I, are the only movies in history to go over the $2 billion mark. Perhaps that's why Cameron is hard at work now, 10 years later, shooting not one, but four, count them, four Avatar sequels. 32 other movies, from Jurassic World to The Dark Knight, have managed to cross the $1 billion box office mark. And that's all very impressive for today's breed of blockbusters, but none of them can touch the once and still reigning king all the way.